In this video we are going to take a look at a rhombus. But first, let's just take a quick look at the parallelogram once again. So here's a parallelogram. Now remember, a parallelogram has the following properties. Now remember, when we discovered the rectangle, the, only, the way we did that was we took this corner here and we shifted it in that direction until we formed a 90 degree shape. So how are we going to form a rhombus? What we're going to do is we're going to take these two parts here and we're going to squeeze them together as well as these two parts down here and you're going to squeeze them together until these two sides have the same length. So let's see what happens. So you can see that we can squeeze them until they look to be about the same. So about there. And so what we can say is that these two sides over here are now going to be the same. But because it's a parallelogram, because remember it's still a parallelogram, we've just shifted things a little bit so that these two sides are now the same. We can say that we know that the opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal. Okay, so that means that this side is still going to be equal to that side, and this side is going to be equal to that side. So look, as, look at what has just happened. We only wanted these two to have the same length, but because it's still a parallelogram, all the sides end up being the same. Let's take a look at the diagonals. Well, we know that a parallelogram has diagonals that bisect each other, and so those diagonals, so this is the same as that, and this one is the same as that, but these lengths over here, so this length, and this length, whoa, that wasn't very nice, but that length over there, they're not going to have the same length, okay? That only happens when we did the rectangle. Because have a look here, this green one goes all the way from here to here, whereas the purple one just has to go for this little distance over there. So you can see that the green one is definitely longer. So with the, with the rectangle, the two diagonals became the same length, but that doesn't happen in a rhombus. But something really cool does happen in a rhombus. Have a look at all four of these triangles that you can see. They are actually all going to be the exact same as each other. For example, have a look at these two triangles. Well, they're going to be the same, or they're going to be congruent, because they have, all, they have three sides that are equal to each other. So this one is the same as that, this is the same as that, and that is the same as that. So that would be congruency due to side, side, side. Now let's have a look at these two triangles. Well, they are also going to be congruent. They share a common side, and then they both have this equal to that, and then, oh, that little line fell away over there. So this one is going to be the same as that. So those two triangles are equal as well. And then lastly, we can look at these two triangles. And once again, we can see, sorry, we've just lost two lines there. We know that these two are going to be the same as each other. This is the same as that. And oh, I don't know what's happening to these lines. Sorry, guys, every time I erase, some lines disappear. So <laughs> that line over there is the same as that one over there. And so what we can see is that all four of these triangles are the same. Now that causes even more interesting things to happen in the center over here. Because if we had to just draw that out, well, we know that all four of these triangles are the same, which means that these four angles are all going to be exactly the same. Now, what do all of those angles have to add up to? Well, because those are going all the way around, we know that they add up to 360. But those four angles are the same, which means that each of them are going to be 90 degrees. And this is a really important feature that you have to remember about a rhombus. The diagonals cut each other at 90 degrees. And now if we are to zoom into these two triangles here, we know that they are congruent. And so what that means is that this angle over here is going to be equal to that angle over there. It then means that these two angles are going to be equal to each other. And then these are going to be two little black dots as well. Why do I say that? Well, that is because we know that the opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal. Okay, And so those two black dots are going to be the same as the opposite black dots. And then if we look at those two triangles over there, then it means that those two are going to be equal to each other. So the reason I've used X is because the opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal. And so that's the important things about a rhombus. Is that the... Okay, so the, the main things about a rhombus is that it is a parallelogram with the following bonus features. Bonus feature number one is that the diagonals cut each other at 90 degrees. Bonus feature number two is that the corner angles are bisected. What I mean by that is that these two halves 
are now going to be equal to each other. These two halves are going to be equal to each other. That doesn't happen in a rectangle or a parallelogram or an original parallelogram. But as soon as you modify it so that these sides are the same, then that changes that. And so the two, the corner angles are going to be bisected. And then most importantly, all four sides have the same length. And maybe you're doubting whether a para... So, so I said that the corner angles are equal to each other. And then I said that a parallelogram and a rectangle doesn't do that. Well, let me show you. I'll quickly draw a rectangle. And you'd visually be able to see that this angle over here, that's quite a big angle. But then look at this little angle. That's tiny. And then look at this big angle over here. But look at that little angle over there. So the corner angles of a parallelogram and a rectangle do not cut each other exactly in half. But as soon as you turn it into a rhombus, then that does happen.